one correction almost immediately. Uh, two or three times he very kindly said, which Tarek is trying to do, I will, uh, is doing, <laughs> trying to do several times. Uh, we're not trying to do it. To get Osman is on our board of patrons. He helped to set it up, up for us. And we are doing. And we're in work, it's work in progress. And actually, the work in progress has become much, much closer than you imagine. And at, the projects are being actioned literally as we speak. They will be actioned during this quarter uh, on the 21st of March in Pakistan. The next quarter, other projects are happening here too. So, uh, we are doing it. And we are doing it together. Uh, the, the, the key question I have, Osman, is that with all of this noise that's going on, uh, with all of this activity, do people have the mind share to squeeze in another philanthropic element into our digital uh, ecosystem? Uh, there are a lot of elements where philanthropy is completely trying to build on philanthropy. I don't see. So, be, sorry. so I believe it is really genuinely a very innovative way of looking at philanthropy. You know, the, uh, in the US, uh, every year, uh, $300 billion are raised uh, for philanthropic uh, purposes. Yes. $300 billion. And probably not more than a few hundred million. Uh, are being done in a digital manner. Uh, so there's a long way to go. Why is that? Why is the adoption so so slow there? You know, as, as you as you saw the uh, title of my presentation, are we ready for the old digital? And we always say, uh, but I, I, I often say, now we have 4G networks, so like the world is going to change. It's not about technology. It's not about, you know, uh, business models, these are easy to, it's about mindset. And as I said, the more you will, change is not something natural. For me to change certain habits, and I live every day in this, it's not easy. There is, so why is that? Because people are used to do certain things in a certain way. The more you, you mentioned at, at various points, youth, and I believe this is the key. This is the key word. In that, in that change. We're talking about 100% uh, MAD as a youth movement. Uh, we have been talking about uh, music as being one of the uh, things that unite uh, a lot of the youth uh, into a common platform because that's common emotion. What do we need to do to spark that, mo uh, that movement? Uh, I'm looking for that, that catalyst. And, and that is where I'm still short. Uh, I think we've got the technology, we've got the ideas, we've got the philosophy. I told you. But where's the catalyst? You bring Beyonce, Oprah, uh, Angelina Jolie, everyone uses them here, and they say we are all 100% mad, and you will see this completely <laughs> catalyzing. Okay. No, no, but no, no, it's true. I, this is yeah. in, in a more serious tone. On a more serious note, it is clear that ambassadors are important. We have had this discussion and how celebrities today as well have this uh, uh, desire to contribute, you know, to give back to community. We see a lot of things. It will take us time uh, to get on this map because, again, they have the same resistance in doing things differently. They have their own setup, their own, their, I would say, their own business model. What we are doing in Pakistan, in my opinion, and, 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 and we had this discussion because we presented this recently, and somebody said, but do you think that this is really now the priority, getting children and making children think differently? It might seem like, you know, a longer term uh, approach as opposed to the immediate. Health, physical security, these are more immediate things and this in my opinion will contribute a lot to put us on the map because you are touching i mean if nutrition and education and of course healthcare but these are are the three pillars around any if you want really to do the right philanthropy because when it comes to having uh, natural catastrophes you have a law that is done 
and you will not have the ability to react as fast as nations when you have tsunamis etc nations have this uh, this is good this is working well but in the fundamental layers of really creating making a difference at the roots i think this is where we can be on the map let me uh, share what we are doing with children in pakistan but pakistan is just a starting point it's a pilot uh, we have uh, that's on the 21st of march uh, then on the 12th of uh, september it is poland in between i'm sure there will be something uh, significant happening in dubai but the idea is that rather than having live earth or live a uh, where and after band beyonce and then you two and then somebody else playing one after the other and everybody is collected together borrowing and reshaping it around education so we have uh, professor tony is going to come in and he is going to be the lead speaker because he uh, he's the specialist but the key thing is between 9 and 10 a.m. in the morning uh, there will be a band be fun there will be games then 10 to 1 he will teach and between that 20 minutes you'll have the top sportsman in the of uh, uh, of the whole uh, in the country that we are in lunch time music again in the evening art and dance and so on so effectively what we're doing is actually creating a a new format a merger of uh, uh, our music platform and our education platform so it's a festival of learning it's a concert of learning do you think that concept has legs or are we mixing two things I think that that's the packaging. But if you look at the real substance, what I what what really not surprised me, but it was a very pleasant discovery, is this video when uh, we saw this little girl saying, "I hated this type of course or etc." But then this training, Professor Buzan, he trained us how to learn. You know, Professor Buzan is the champion of mind mapping, etc. So it's really taking them to learn differently. And that was making a difference because these people will think differently. They will think differently about they will think differently about the problems that are surrounding them. They will think differently about political, social, etc. problems. So it is probably a longer term impact, but it is a very impactful way. I'll open it up to the, the audience for a few questions. If you have any thoughts, any ideas, um, you have a, an absolute uh, leader and specialist here. So here's your chance. Um, thanks, Osman, for the talk. Um, clearly, it felt really passionate. And I resonate with that. And really thank you for that. And um, I want to touch uh, on uh, your thoughts about how people connect today. Um, but a bit of background. I used to use a computer since I was five. I was programming in basic at the time. And I grew up in the internet uh, world. Um, and I worked in the internet space. But then when Facebook came along the way, the serendipity you're, you're talking about, first when I saw it and it was growing and then it was suddenly used by everyone around me. And I was kind of the pioneer in my, in my immediate environment in like technology and all these kind of things. And I said like, this thing, what is this thing? It's useless. Um, and then ironically, I ended up joining Facebook, the company. And I was, uh, when I was inside, I realized two things. First, that like, how powerful a change it's actually provoking uh, once I saw it from inside. And it really like, shifted my perception of the world entirely. And the second thing is, um, it didn't really even happen all by chance. And Mark Zuckerberg says himself that when he started it, it wasn't meant to be a company. It wasn't meant to be a business. But then when he started being something, like the way he took that beginning, that seed of something into what it is today. And I saw this really when I was inside. Um, there, was, there was a vision. There was a vision. And the point to where I want to come is the following. Now, his next step is, okay, now we have these 1.3 billion people connected. What's the next step? And speaking of the telecom industry, and I was in the telecom industry. So he's the one driving the whole ecosystem into connecting the next 5 billion people 
with the internet.org project. And he's trying not to force, but to find ways to collaborate and make the telecom operators feel reassured, talking about the fear factor, right? That this is not gonna kill them or cannibalize them, that they need to create that value together for the people who are not connected today. And I really have, um, um, it, it's something very personal to me how to help these people who don't have access to this kind of technology to really empower them. And what I feel ironic again in, in, in this journey that I'm seeing like happening be before my eyes is that he lives in San Francisco in California, like with part of the wealthiest part of the world, etc. But he's going into these places to try to offer this basic connectivity service, which is the human need or the human basic right. connectivity as a human right, as you portrayed it. Uh, and the telecom operators, like the telco industry, they have the direct connection with these people, and they are not offering this basic connectivity at a very basic level, like the, the 911 kind of thing, kind of, kind of access. Yeah. So the, the question is, how do you think, from your position as um, from the telco space, how do you think that industry can really adapt to do these kind of things generally, but in a viable way? Because I understand they have business models they have to defend, but as these business models are being attacked, how are you feeling? How are you living this disruption, this disturbance, as you said it? It's another uh, question. It's debated in the last every GSMA Congress, which is where all operators uh, get together. It's debated at the top levels. People are discussing. There was the phase where we need to block these guys. They are riding on our networks without paying. They want to ride the bus. These are, I'm quoting. They want to ride the bus without paying. Others are saying they want to share our gain. They don't want to share the pain because uh, they don't invest. We build the infrastructure and we put the billion. So this is a big debate. And I don't think that is simple. I, I, am, I don't think that you can resist something that is becoming mainstream when it's a basic human right. So I'm absolutely in line with you. But these cooperative model needs a conversation. These com this conversation is not happening smoothly because one side is afraid, the other try to, uh, you know, so this is a, discussions with Google are not happening well, governments are interfering because there are ecosystems that are distorted. Uh, a clever guy like uh, Travis Kalanick, inventor and founder of Uber, is uh, being in low uh, suits in every, because you have federation is disrupting too much ecosystems. So we are living this disruption phase. It's very exciting. Some people feel I, I, I like it because everything every day there are something there is something new. Another question here. Uh, thank you very much for coming. It was great uh, hearing your insights. Um, so I'm just going to switch gears and, and get your perspective on leadership. Of course, you've led the journey at do very successfully from grounds up, and and just kind of some of the key tenets you think have defined and been sort of driven the company from where you built it to seeing it now and, and your future, how would you highlight what are this, the key core, you know, leadership things, skills that you think all of us should, 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 should learn about? You know, I, I, I always say, um, you have to be stubborn on a vision. But sometimes stubborn on a vision is the recipe to just fail. I say, I'm stubborn on a vision because I believe this is the right way to go, but I am flexible on the execution because things happen, ecosystems that we do not control. So I don't mind, okay, I want to go there, but for the moment I cannot go directly going there and then going there, but then at the end we reach. Everything has to get you closer. That's one, uh, if I'm asked to give just, you know, some headlines, that's one. Two people. People, people. You have, you need to have the way of driving, being able to drive people. You know, in management courses, you need, you learn that there are various styles of management: management by authority, management by consensus, or management by adherence. And I don't believe in management by authority. You don't get, it. but you need to put the cursor as well. In a startup, you cannot look for consensus. And I don't believe in consensus. 
a leader should be able to gather people. Listen, guys, I want to take you there. Trust me, because one, two, three, this is the right way of going there. And follow me and, you, and have this conversation all the time. So people and communication. A CEO and a leader is a storyteller. I tell the story every day to my customers, to the employees, to stock markets, to regulators, to media, to whatever. You have to be, have, and you know, it's the same story. I'm not telling every story, but you know, I don't know if you've seen this movie and I, I really like Vantage Point, where it's the same story, but every time you're looking at it from a different angle and different point of view, that's as well leadership. The story I tell to my employees is the same story because you can't compromise on the story. You're not, you know, uh, manipulating things. But I tell them because this is the audience I have. I will not tell stock markets the same story that I tell to my employees where I'm telling them, come with me, come in this journey. So one, the vision, stubborn on the vision, flexible on the execution, people, 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 and communicate and tell the story right. Yes, Lamia. Thank you so much, Mr. Osman. It's always a pleasure listening to your stories. And it has always been motivational. Um, my question is that I'm looking at the app model over there, and I see um, that there is a merge uh, or a collaboration between Do and 100%. Um, it's starting. Yes. It's uh, starting. I, I this like is just, we were illustrating what it could look like. But of course, if there is an app like this, I think Do. At this or not, and everyone should have these things to allow people to, to do this. Yeah. So, uh, how would you manifest your support to uh, this project? And um, could you be with us on what we would discuss together to push it forward? And uh, what what we, we said is that obviously, if this is empowerment by digital, telcos will have to play a big role. People providing access, but at some point, this app will be an over the top app. So we just, you know, get there and it, it exists. So we're starting because as well, it needs to have a shop window. So this is a discussion that Tarek is having with the team. So I don't have a precise model now, but this is a, a, a discussion that is uh, on, on, on the... This whole movement, this whole uh, revolution is, is empowered through digital. Uh, apps will be one of the key vehicles uh, with which we will get there. Do is a leading provider. So it is a, a marriage that is inevitable uh, in that way. Uh, also, the other thing I, I see with Do is that UAE is a, is a relatively small environment. Uh, so we can focus projects and do them really, really well and go global. And as one of the final questions I had for Osman is, can we be born in Dubai and then go global and have a great story? And perhaps we will encourage Do be part of that birth. Thank you both so much. And it was, we take um, technology for granted, I think. So it was very interesting to see the kind of historical flashback puts things into perspective as to how much has changed. So my question is now, you know, the Maasai warrior in Kenya has a phone in his hand. Everyone here in Dubai has a smartphone in their hand. What can we actually do with this phone in our hand to make a positive difference? With the phone. First question, do you pay your bills regularly? Because <laughs> uh, before I tell you what you're... No, no, let's, let's be... I'll, I'll, I'll have a, 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 an awful reputation if I continue provoking uh, like this. You will be... Today you do a lot of things, right? Every day you discover that you can do much more things. Uh, tomorrow you will be able to do even more and more. We are exploring things on, you know, mobile, well, first of all, mobile payment that I sarcastically mentioned is going to happen. And you know as well that there are major initiatives. I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, Dubai, you mentioned the UAE. There are two major initiatives, Smart Government and Smart Dubai, with a clear political willingness and clear political vision around this. And this is very rare where the articulation is coming 
so clearly from the top leadership saying, we want with a, with a clear vision. And the interesting thing, I was talking about this this morning, is that when you see different cities, uh, for instance, the city of Vienna said, we want to become smart because we want mobility to be like this. Uh, Ham Hamburg, uh, they want to become smart because they have an issue with the harbor of Hamburg. Uh, they want to become, uh, Hamburg ha ha Harbor is a, really one of the, and they want to compete with the harbors like New York or even Dubai uh, ports, etc. So, but that they have a problem of capacity. So being smart with them is articulated around this. Valencia has different things. Seoul has different things. Here, the articulation why we are doing all this came in, you know, like the most obvious, simple, and powerful way that we heard. And this was really, why are we doing all this? Because we want to make the people happy. Because we want to make the people happier. Because if the city becomes smart, that means that you, with your smartphone, you will be able to do a lot of things in a more efficient way, faster in some cases, simpler, uh, more cost effective, more fun, cool. That's, and at the end, that will make me, that will make you and me and all of us happier. So that's an articulation that is happening. It's not only what can I do, is how simple and seamless is the experience. Let me give you another example. Wi-Fi is becoming critical. We go everywhere and here we have to authenticate, connect, etc. Imagine a city where the Wi-Fi experience is completely seamless. Once you have an authentication uh, and then you can go and, and use it. Some public places, of course, you cannot have Wi-Fi everywhere. And because people imagine, oh, Wi-Fi, it's free connection. There is nothing that is totally free in life. Somebody has to pay. I really want you to keep this in mind. Somebody has to pay somebody, and uh, it's a zero sum equation all the time. So this, but imagine the simplicity of these experiences. This is what you will be able to do with your smartphone more and more every day. You were talking about how Arab societies are now moving from just buying and consuming to creating through innovation, through entrepreneurship. Yes. And that there has to be governance structures in place to accommodate this innovation. Now, when it comes to governance structures in the Arab world, there's a lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy. How can everyday people, just like people in this room, businessmen, entrepreneurs, how can we instigate the government to enact policies that are favorable for innovation and favorable for entrepreneurship? I can assure you, because I have the privilege of being, you know, in some of these circles, that creating uh, that the, first of all, you know, just the fact that at the top level of the leadership, 2015 was declared under the theme of innovation. Just that is a clear indication. But you're absolutely right. Let's not talk about the entire Arab world. Although I'd like to think that this, what's happening in this country can become a beacon and some, uh, an example of, you know, best practices. But there is an awareness that a true system that will enable, it's not only about governance, it's an ecosystem. Because for instance, it's not only about governance, but it's the presence of, for instance, a VC culture, a venture capital culture. It's a presence of VC funds that is needed. And if you see, I can tell you from personal experience that I have seen more and more VC funds coming in the last year, year and a half. So this is the good news. This ground is boiling. Things are happening. Scenes are starting, seeds are starting to grow. But at the governance level, regulations, laws, etc., things are as well are happening. Is it happening at the space where entrepreneurs wish? Certainly not. But we have to. How can you do? Is always to say we want to do more. We want to innovate because you have ears that are really listening to what you're saying. Um, you mentioned obviously the benefits um, of technology and the fact that it drives uh, human behavior yes. these days. Um, and I guess my point is that there's a danger that the flip side is it 
gets to a point where it dehumanizes people. You know, it's democratizing, but only so much to a certain extent. So um, in Dubai, uh, what is it that we can do to kind of, I guess, more practical steps, more practical ways for us to get involved and do things technologically or otherwise? Um, you touched upon it in theory, but I'd really like to know if there, there are actual things, small, big, that we can do to counter that. I don't have an answer to this, and it's difficult. I can tell you that, like anyone, I have concern, and I share with my wife when we see our kid, uh, 10 years old, completely glued to his phone, and, and we think, but is it healthy? Is it, uh, what, what do we need to do? So we have this, and guess what? We don't have a magical recipe or magical answer. I think as well, conversations, again, a key word that you will see me use. Conversation will happen. There is this new shared uncertainty because all of us, we feel this. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this small video on YouTube. It's, uh, you know, uh, get your uh, head up. Uh, and uh, it's, it's true. It's true. In a very emotional way, uh, if we're going to be invaded by technology, the risk of having uh, being, uh, things dehumanized. Absolutely true, but with all in all humility, I don't have a magic recipe for this. It requires that you and me we talk. It requires that all of us we talk. It requires that we see something, and the the societies will have you know you will have something that will happen, and you will have uh, trying here to to translate. You will figure out they will create their own abuse, misuse, and then you will find the antidotes immediately. Some of these antidotes can be technological, others, I participated, I was in Boston in, um, I think, in a few months ago, and I was part of a discussion with really on privacy. And it's very important in the era of big data, how to protect privacy of individual, how, where do you put the cursor, how, who decide, who can access, because to have this, to foster this innovation platform, you need more and more open APIs. You need companies to provide data so entrepreneurs can go take this data in reservoirs and work on that. But the more you have, there is a balance between, I want more and more open data. I want more and more open data, but where is the risk on, on, on privacy, etc. Cursors have to be placed. Thanks, thank God we still have common sense. Sometimes it's not obvious by discussing, by keep focus on the vision, discuss, open your eyes, look what's happening. Open your arms, open your hearts, you know, and, and to open your minds to all what's happening, discuss and be flexible. Thank you. On the Thank you very much, Osman. Uh, from the very first day I met you, I have focused on being stubborn with my vision. As you know, I do not let I, know I do not let go. I'm being very imaginative. <laughs> I'm being imaginative with execution and flex around that. But we need help. We need uh, to reach out to the community, to all of you. And as uh, Pilantha's video said, uh, it is, they're all little things, and together we can make this revolution happen. So thank you very much for coming. I appreciate that. Spread the word and I'll catch you soon.